again this is Peter and uh, in this uh, video I would like to talk to you about a uh, production and cost and uh, as we did in class and uh, here's what the uh, how I presented production and cost uh, structure of firms uh, I had the students uh, come up uh, and in, uh, and I asked them in one minute to produce a widget uh, they had a space um, land and they had raw materials the pieces of paper here and a stapler capital and uh, the, each student was brought up in the front of the desk and they were required to produce uh, as many widgets as, uh, as, uh, as possible within one minute so the widget was produced as follows they took a piece of paper they folded it they folded it once they folded it twice and then they stapled it and then they put this another one they took one here they folded it once they folded it twice there we go and then they stapled it so they kept on producing um, uh, so one student came up and um, produced uh, in, in one minute uh, a certain amount of widgets then i had another student come up and together the two students produced two widgets um, and uh, then I had another student, three students come up, and the three together were producing widgets in one minute, and then four, and then five, etc. Okay, so once I did that, then uh, then we recorded the, their their production level. So they had a so in one in one of my sections, I'll present you one the results of one from my, from my from my first section. Uh, we had labor. There we go, and we have production. I'll put production with Q and labor with uh, L, labor or L. Uh, so zero workers. Well, we produce nothing is produced. We need workers at least to produce something. Uh, and then uh, we had one worker. Uh, it was Cheka, and in my morning in my morning section, and she produced, uh, believe it or not. 12 widgets it's a record-breaking widget number 12 widgets in uh, in one minute uh, she was amazing I, I gave them I told them that I'll give them five fifty cents per widget um, and the productivity skyrocketed as you see um, then we had the two workers uh, it was a uh, Jack guy and um, who else was it uh, Tavis and together they produced 20 widgets uh, then I had a th uh, three workers together. Ian came up. Uh, Jacka stayed there. And uh, oh, and by the way, they what they tend to do, what they did is they specialized and divided work. So one was stapling, and the other ones uh, was uh, was um, um, was uh, uh, folding pieces of paper. Uh, the three workers together. One was stapling, and the other two were folding. And we got uh, twenty-seven produced 27 four workers together they produced uh, uh, who was the fourth one uh, it was uh, can't remember uh, Christian uh, they produced 31 and then uh, five workers together uh, they produced uh, 33 altogether so uh, what the students tend to see is that as a as a First thing that they see is that in in this case uh, in the other section there were some in, they were increasing returns initially, but they see this the law of diminishing returns. So if you put labor here and uh, uh, production here and then uh, Q, then what you see, tend to see is that for let's say one labor, two labor, three labor, four labor, and five labor, and then we have here by increments of ten, let's say. 10, 15, or 5, let's start from 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So Jacka produced 12 units somewhere about here. Um, Jacka and Tavis produced 20. Uh, e and Jacka and Tavis produced 27. Somewhere, I guess, here. Uh, four together produce 31. And five together produce 33, somewhere here. Okay, over here. There we go. So, so students tend to see uh, uh, 
the law of diminishing uh, returns coming in because as as we increase labor onto a fixed factor uh, of production which was a piece of land about uh, about one foot by one foot so it was very small no two feet by two feet or so it was very small pieces of piece of piece of, a, of a desk uh, and then of course they had only one capital staple and they tend to oops come on come on come on up you go good uh, and then they see this uh, production function, uh, the typical, uh, not a typical production function, because uh, uh, in, in some cases you have increasing returns to the division and specialization of labor, and then diminishing returns enters after a certain amount of labor. Uh, so they see this diminishing, uh, diminishing uh, returns appearing here uh, throughout. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I ask them to compute their average productivity and marginal productivity, and it's very straightforward, and they can actually compute it very easy, and they're, I ask this class to, put, to, to compute them. And average productivity is the, uh, the average average productivity of your workforce, so it's basically the amount of widgets that you produce divided by the by divided by labor and marginal productivity is the additional output produced from an extra unit of worker uh, so it's easy to come to to put that put this in a, into a table uh, 12 divided by 1 is 12 20 divided by 2 is 10 uh, 27 divided by 3 oh nice round, round numbers here 9 uh, 31 divided by 4 is uh, 7.75 and 33 divided by 5 is 6.6 uh, .6. okay and then margin productivity uh, is uh, uh, the additional output produced from an extra unit of labor here it's always labor changes always by one so we have basically the margin productivity is initially 12 you can start it off between zero and one. And that's what I did in the other example. Uh, uh, if it's but because it's discrete, I just I just tell them to put it exactly on the uh, at the level of one labor. Uh, then eight, then uh, seven, then four. So the additional worker, the first additional, the first worker produces twelve additional units of output. Uh, the second worker coming in produces an additional eight units of output. Uh, the third worker coming in produces an additional seven units of output. Then four, and then uh, and then two. So the students tend to see this uh, the 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 love dim the love diminishing returns entering uh, here throughout, uh, and margin productivity is the change in Q for a change in labor okay they also tend to see that the average productivity does not decline as fast as marginal productivity uh, declines um, you can explain the concept that if um, marginal productivity is uh, above average productivity average productivity will be pulled up in other words if you bring in an additional worker that adds more to output than the average productivity of the existing workforce then your average productivity will rise I always use, use the example of their exam if they score a much higher score in their exam then they, that will pull up their average and the students have to understand the concept much easier and if margin productivity is is below average productivity then average productivity would be pulled down if your performance in an exam is is, is below your average uh, performance in the course, then your average will go down. So it's and of course, if marginal productivity is equal to average productivity, then average productivity does not change. Okay, and uh, oops, yeah. So those are the concepts that the students seem to understand. So you have the, the law of diminishing returns. Uh, which says basically as you increase labor onto a fixed factor of onto a fixed factor of production, uh, eventually the additional worker that uh, that uh, enters uh, will produce uh, less than the previous worker uh, has produced. Total production goes up, but at a, at a declining rate. Yeah, and uh, so, and I also ask them to graph uh, this relationship of average productivity and marginal productivity.
and uh, uh, this is what the 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 plot the plot again one two three oops four and five labor here average productivity and marginal productivity here and we let's put them in increments of two now two four six eight ten units and uh, and 12 units up here so the first uh, so the first worker produced 12 uh, additional units of output and uh, its average productivity was 12 uh, the second uh, worker produced uh, an, uh, had the whole let's, let's, let's plot average productivity they, they produce an average 10 uh, three works together produce an average of nine um, uh, four workers together produce an average of 7.75 somewhere here and then the uh, the f uh, five workers together produce 6.6 6.6 .6 would be somewhere here. Okay, so you see average productivity declines, but doesn't decline as fast as as, as marginal productivity declines. And then marginal productivity, 12 for the first unit, 8 for the second unit, uh, 7 for the third unit, 4 for the fourth unit, and 2 for the uh, fifth unit. So you can basically see Marginal productivity. So there's average productivity and there's marginal productivity. Okay. Um, and uh, my other section, uh, the, 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 I'll leave it as an exercise because we're going ab above my 10 minute mark. But, um, uh, and you can do all these things um, labor and output. And this is what they produced my other section. It was uh, um, Deep uh, and John and um, Kim and uh, who was the fourth? somebody else I can remember sorry uh, so uh, here's what they produced and just check the numbers here and you can do all this other stuff and, and see the behavior zero workers zero production one worker produced seven uh, seven uh, widgets two works together produce 17 you can see there's increasing returns here uh, three workers uh, uh, produced 21 uh, four workers produced 24 uh, and five workers together produced uh, 25 so you can f figure out uh, you can plot this and as a production oh here we go so zero workers zero output one worker seven uh, widgets two workers 17 three workers 21 widgets four wood workers 24 widgets and five workers 25 widgets uh, and you can plot the, all these things uh, just be careful when because I, I assumed I made this con a continuous function and when I make a, the margin productivity a continuous function it's uh, I should be careful a bit because if it was continuous then we can break up labor into smaller units instead of uh, Zero, one, two, three. In which case, you should be you should be putting the margin productivity uh, between uh, zero and one. Uh, between sorry, yeah, between zero and one, between one and two, between two and three, three and four, and four and five. So it's gonna gonna scale it up, and uh, try try to do it um, this way when you're using this example. Okay, I think I went over my time limit of ten minutes. Uh, it's uh, thirteen. 53 seconds, 13 minutes and 53, 56, 14 minutes. So it's, it went beyond. And I hope that uh, this uh, explains these concepts uh, to you, the law of diminishing returns, uh, the basically and the production function, and as well as how do you measure productivity of uh, the variable factor of labor in this case. You know, how productive is your labor force? Uh, thank you. And then, then I'm going to move into cost structure. Okay, bye now.